Hi everyone and welcome to how to create a 3D mirrorball inspired text effect in Adobe Photoshop. So before we begin this tutorial you'll need the following assets. First you'll need the donut monster font which you can get from thefont.com. Then you'll need this image here for the disco lights. You'll also need some gradient effects, which you can download from DeviantArt. And finally, the image here of people dancing in a club. You'll be able to find the links to all these assets in the description below. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a bump pattern. So let's create a new document here, which is 35 by 35 pixels. Click OK. And then we're just going to zoom into our square to make editing it a little bit easier. Use the marquee tool here and we want to select the outer pixels of this square. So let's select that and then press Control shift i on the keyboard to inverse that selection which is going to be one pixels wide for our border here. And then we're going to fill in this border with a color. So let's fill in this border with a color of 020202 which is almost black. Click OK, use the paint bucket tool, fill that in. Now we want to select the next line of pixels here. So let's do the same thing again. Press Control Shift I on the keyboard and holding Alt on the keyboard here, we want to remove the selection which is already filled in. Use the paint bucket tool and this time we're going to use another color. So this color is going to be 373737 which is a dark gray color, fill that in. And then same thing again, let's go ahead and press Control Shift I on the keyboard, press Alt on the keyboard to remove the colored selection. And now this border here, we're going to change the color to something a little bit lighter, which is B-A-B-A-B-A. -B -A -B -A. Click OK and fill that one in. And then next we want to fill in the color of our white square here, which is going to be F7, 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 which is an almost white color. So let's fill that in here. And then once you've done that, we want to define the pattern. So click Edit, go to Define Pattern, and we want to name this Bump, then click OK. And now we want to create a new document. So let's go to File, New, and create a document which is 980 by 980. Click OK. And using the Paint Bucket tool, we want to make sure that the selection here is selecting Pattern. And we want to select the pattern that we just created, which is the Bump Texture. So make sure Bump is selected here. And then click on our document to fill it in. Awesome. Now all we need to do is save the document under a name, Bump Texture, and then close it. So go to File, Save As, let's name it Bump Texture, let's save this as a JPEG, and then click on Save. Awesome. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to create the background for our text. So let's create a new document here which is going to be 1000 by 1000 pixels. Click OK. And now let's go ahead and duplicate this background layer here. And let's name this BG for background. Now let's right click here and click on blending options. And we want to create a gradient. Let's click on the gradient overlay here. And we want to use some colors. So let's click on here to create the colors. So the first color here is going to be 03010C, which is a very dark purple color. And then the lighter color here is going to be 240333, which is a lighter purple. Click OK. And we want to make sure that the blend mode is set to normal and the style is set to linear. Excellent. And this will apply a simple linear gradient to the background. 
Next, we want to create the disco text. So select the text tool here. Make sure that Donut Monster is selected as your font. And then make sure that the color is set to white. Click on your document here and let's go ahead and type in whatever text you want. And here I'm just going to make the text a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing and place it roughly in the center of our document. Now, if we want to be a little bit more accurate with our, our sizing, let's go ahead and make the font size 150, like so. Cool. Now we want to convert this to a shape. So making sure that the text layer is selected, we want to go to type and select convert to shape like so. And next we want to create this into a 3D layer. So go to 3D and we want to select new 3D layer from selected layer. So it's new 3D extrusion from selected layer. So click on that and this will automatically change our text into a 3D layer, like so. Awesome. Now that we've got our 3D text here, the next thing we want to do is we want to access the properties and the settings. So in order to do this, we want to go to Windows and make sure that we've got the properties window here and also we want to make sure that we've got the settings windows so let's go ahead and find the 3d settings window here which is this one and we can drag these out so that we can see exactly what we're doing as we'll be using these quite a bit in this tutorial awesome now let's go ahead and select the move tool and you'll see under 3D mode, we've got these options here, which is to rotate, to roll, to drag, to slide and to scale our 3D object here. So using these options here, we can go ahead and move our text into a position that we want, like so. Awesome. Excellent. And then once you're happy with your position, we'll go ahead and move on to the next area of the tutorial, which is editing the mesh and cap settings. So over in the 3D panel here, let's make sure that we've selected our disco text. And then in the properties, you want to go to our mesh tab here and change the texture mapping from scale to tile and we want the extrusion depth to be let's say about 50 like so awesome now let's go ahead and click on the cap icon here and we want to change the bevel width to two percent and the contour here we want to change this to half round like so and then the inflate strength, we want to change this to about 10%. And you'll see as we're changing these properties, our text will change to reflect that. Excellent. Now we want to modify the material settings. So underneath our 3D panel here, let's select all of our disco materials here. And inside the properties, we want to change a few things. So make sure that the specular here, we want to change this to, let's say, a, another value. So let's change this to, let's try 135 by 135 by 135, like so. Click OK. And then the shine here, we want to change this to a hundred the reflection we want to change this to 100 the roughness we want to change this to 10 percent and then the bump we want to change this to 20 and then the refraction let's change this 
to 1.3, like so. Excellent. Now let's just select the inflation material here under our 3D panel. And then we want to click on the bump here for the bump folder icon. And now we want to load the texture that we created. So click on load texture and load the bump texture that we created at the beginning of this tutorial. And this will load the bump texture onto our text like so. Now let's just go ahead and click on the bump texture icon and we want to edit the UV properties. So click on that. And in this new window here, we're going to edit these tile properties here and using these sliders, just go ahead and change these until you're happy with the way that your disco text looks. So we just we're aiming to get some nice square texture on our disco. So just not too big and not too small like so. And then once you're happy, just click OK for that. And then select the other material, the other materials here, like so. And then again, going to the bump texture, let's go ahead and select bump texture like so. We'll also need to adjust the UV properties for the extrusion. So let's go ahead and select the extrusion material, go to bump and then edit UV properties here. And let's go ahead and edit our tile so that it's similar to the front of our text. Like so, so it's a similar size. editing it like that. And then once you're happy with that, click OK. And now we're going to go and modify the lighting. So in our 3D panels tab here, let's go ahead and select infinite light. And now let's go ahead and change the intensity on our properties here to 20% and the shadow softness to 30% like so. Let's select the environment tab here, then go to the properties panel and under IBL, we want to select the texture icon here and select replace texture and then select the people inside a club image that we've downloaded and then open that. And then hopefully you'll see how that affects our 3D text like so. Excellent. And let's go ahead and change the intensity of this to about 30% or let's say 40% like so. Let's keep it at 30. And now let's go ahead and use the move tool and we can change the environment light texture around until you get a result that you like. Excellent. Now, if we go back to infinite light, we can also go ahead and use the move tool to change where our lighting is coming from as well. Great. Now, once you've done that, let's go ahead and add the background to our image. Now let's go ahead and add the disco lights background. So let's go to file, open, open up the disco lights background. Let's press Control A on the keyboard to select all, Control C to copy it. And let's create a new layer above our background layer and then paste it in by pressing Control V. Now on our Disco Lights layer, so let's rename this Disco Lights. Let's go ahead and change the blend mode to Linear Dodge Add and change the opacity to about 50%. Now let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and change the radius to about 2.7. Click OK. And now it's time to render the scene. 
Now I'm making sure that your 3D layer is selected. We want it to go to 3D and then render 3D layer and then wait for the render to finish. Awesome. So now that we have our final render here, we can begin to create some final adjustments to our image. So let's go to the adjustment layers here and select levels. And then we want to click on the this clip but to layer button here. And then let's go ahead and adjust the levels here until we get something that we like. And then we can also go ahead and create some more uh, adjustment layers here. So let's go ahead and click on Vibrance here just to bring out the colors a little bit more. And then perhaps the saturation of our text just a little bit like so. And again, make sure that that clip button has been selected. And now let's go ahead and select the curves adjustment layer here. We can go ahead and just make some slight adjustments to that. Select blue here and then just bring the blue up slightly like so. And then finally, we can go ahead and add some flares into our image. So to do this, let's go ahead and create a new layer here and call this flares. Use the paintbrush tool here. And we want to make sure that we are using the flares brush. So just right click on our image here and then make sure that we're using stars and flares. Click OK and then just choose a size that you like and go to brush settings and we want to change the shape dynamics so that the size jitter is at 50% and then the smoothing we want to click the smoothing here and we want to make sure that the angle jitter is set at 100% just to randomize our flares a little bit here and then all we have to do is just add flares to our image just randomly clicking where you think the shine should be like so excellent finally the last thing we want to do is create a gradient map like so and then let's go ahead and choose a gradient here so let's select the gradient and with the gradient map, we just want to load up the gradients that we downloaded in the link below. And we want to choose the sky sundown color here. Click OK. And then we want to make sure that dither has been selected. And we want to change the blend mode here to color. So let's change this to color and the opacity to five percent now this makes a very subtle change but it does make a slight difference to your overall image in the end awesome so that's it for this tutorial i hope you had fun creating this 3d mirrorball inspired text effect in photoshop and i'll see you next time on tuts plus